Hey everybody, this is my 40 gallon native tank. And today we are gonna get in here and do some maintenance. We're gonna do a big water change, get the glass wiped down. I wanna remove a bunch of that duckweed if I can. And you will see that the water flow in the back is reduced to a mere trickle. So I'm gonna to have to get in there and clean out the uh, filter on the pump. I've also noticed that I'm getting some biofilm developing on the surface, and that's unusual for this tank. I have a power head down in that back uh, left corner, and it usually keeps enough water flow going around the tank that I will basically have a clockwise sort of swirl going on, and all the weeds and everything end up in that back left corner um, sort of above where the power head is and now you can see how everything's just sort of sitting still so the power head may be clogged up I got to get in there and clean that up I definitely got to pick up the circulation in this tank somewhat uh, I'm a little concerned I've lost a bunch of fish uh, shot a video recently uh, caught some new fish added some fish if you didn't catch that video updating on this tank I'll attach a card uh, if I remember and you can check that out. If not, you can just check out the playlist for this native tank and find out what's going on with that. But since I don't have any sculpins or darters or anything here in this tank, I'm going to admit that I kind of lost interest and got a little frustrated and even a little depressed about it for a few days and kind of haven't really been spending a lot of time uh, in front of this tank. And you can see the results of me sort of neglecting it. And this is only for just a, you know, maybe a week of not really being on top of it. The algae is growing again. And the water being so still is what's really concerning me. I really got to get in there and get that power head and that filter cleaned out and get that water flowing around a little more. Now, when I did lose the darters and the sculpins, because I already know where you're thinking, um, I did have adequate water, well, maybe I obviously didn't have adequate water flow, but I had as much as this tank had available at the time. I did have the filter running full, I did have the power head running full, and I still was not able to generate enough um, either food for them or enough oxygen for them or whatever, but I just don't think this tank is set up for um, those sculpins and darters or whatever. I've just not had luck with them. So like I said, the tank kind of went through a little bit of a week or so of me being kind of bummed out about it, and this is the visual results of that. And I even think I might have another dead crayfish. I've seen this crayfish there twice now today. I've been in here, this is my second time now. And that crayfish has not moved, and it looks awfully still. So I really, really, really think we've got a dead crayfish in there, too. So let's find out. Oh, no, he's moving. Nice. I don't have a dead crayfish. Well, that's good news. I was really fully expecting to pull a dead, stinky crayfish out of there. But as soon as I touched him, he started moving. Maybe he was just sleeping. So that's good. All right, I'm a little bit happier now. Um, again, we're just going to do a before and after. I'm going to, you know, nothing fancy. Just do a water change, wipe the glass down. You don't need to see any special techniques behind that. So there you go, everybody. There's your before. Hey, and there's your after. I was hoping I would be able to get some video with a few more of the fish in it. Maybe as the video progresses, they'll come out and be a little more uh, outgoing rather than hiding so much. I know a lot of people seem to think that I don't have very many fish left in this tank, but I really do. During the water change, I was counting and I got uh, at least 15 or 18 of the gambusia, the mosquito fish. And there are several of the striped minnows, which I believe to be some sort of notropus species. Still have not seen that uh, white sucker fish that I put in there. And I did not see any darters or sculpins while I was looking around. I did see two crayfish, though. Uh, I believe there's three of them, but I'm not 100% sure because I never saw all three at once. And one of them was kind of in the same general end of the tank. So I don't know if I was seeing the same one at two different times or if they were actually two different crayfish. I think there's three of them in there, though, but I'm not 100% on that. I definitely saw two today, though, so we know that for sure. Um, just did a big water change. Like I said, I got the glass wiped down on the outside. I didn't even bother to wipe it down on the inside. I did that uh, the other day, so I didn't need to do that again today. In fact, now that I'm looking into the tank, I can see one of the crayfish sitting right there. Has a nice look at a little school of the fish going by that's still going by. So you can see I've got a bunch of the gambusia still left in there. Uh, another one of the crayfish is living down there. You can actually see one of his little antennae sticking out a little bit. 
So I know I've got that one, and I think there's another one that is living sort of down this end under here. Uh, again, I saw one here, and then a few minutes later, I saw one back here. So I don't know if that was the same one or not, because while I was doing the water change, I also watched the one crawl out of this end, crawl all the way across the front of the tank, and around here and all the way back and go down underneath the power head in the back. So they move around quite a lot. And that's why I say if I don't see all three of them at once, I can't positively say that it's three of them. I don't, I haven't, you know, studied them enough that I can actually positively identify them and say, okay, that's, you know, Bob and that one's Larry and so on and so forth. But I think there's three of them in there. I'm going to pretty much go with that. All right, now the elephant in the room is the big water sprite that I put on top. I don't know what's going to happen with this. I don't know whether I really like this a lot or not. Uh, I know this is a native tank, and yet I've obviously got a tropical type fern growing out of the tank. My regular viewers will know that I'm not one for biotopes or, you know, super scientifically accurate tanks. This is my native tank, but I got no problem throwing a little bit of water sprite in there, regardless of whether it's native or not. If it looks good, I'm going to go ahead and do it. That's so why I'm not worried about it. Uh, in fact, those crayfish are invasive species. I've got a little piece of java fern right there. Um, that is milfoil, which is an invasive species, but I did collect here locally. So again, this is not a true native biotope, and that doesn't concern me at all about putting this uh, water sprite in here. So I'm hoping that it will do okay because it was already growing emergent. If you hadn't figured it out, I grabbed some of the water sprite that's growing out of here. I did my best to kind of reposition that, but it sort of fell into the tank and it's just kind of, yeah, it's kind of sitting on that piece of wood right there. So hopefully it won't go uh, too much further and we'll continue growing up and out. But I did rip that in half and took a big chunk of the root mass out of it, brought it over here. And this one is just kind of hanging and it's just sort of propped up on this. This is why I've got it all splayed out like this. If I were to fold this up tight, it would just drop straight through. There's nothing holding that up. So we're going to kind of let it grow. We've got a little bit of new growth starting in here uh, already. And since it's already emergent growth and everything, I don't think it's going to undergo any shock. It's not like I took it from out of the water, you know, underwater and then exposed it to the atmosphere or vice versa. I didn't take um, you know, plants that were exposed to the atmosphere and then suddenly submerged them. This was growing just like this, just in a different tank. So it should be okay. And we'll wait and see what it actually looks like. There's upshots and downshots. The upshot, of course, is that the fish feel more comfortable and they've got a little bit of cover and some shade and they don't feel so skittish. The downside, of course, is that it blocks all the light and makes the tank nice and dark. And, you know, all the conditions that make the fish feel more comfortable also makes it a lot harder to see them. You know, again, that makes sense. That's why they're more comfortable. They're more difficult for predators uh, or anybody else to spot when they're in that nice shady area. Just about make out the claw of that crayfish in there. That one is still on the rock back there. And I'm telling you, there's one more in here somewhere. I'm sure of it. Um, remember, this big rock right here, that whole rock is, there's a rock under this end, you know, sitting here. And then there's a rock under this end sitting here. So that is lifted up. And there, there's enough room underneath of that one rock right there for all the inhabitants of this tank to safely hide. And then, of course, I've got, you know, all the rest of that. So there's probably more um, room to hide in there than you might first think. So I think there's three crayfish in there, but I don't know for sure. We'll have to wait and see. But there you go. That was my video. I also got the uh, filter flowing again, although I got to say it's been about two hours. I've been letting the tank settle down and we already are about half the volume of flow that I started with. So that filter got clogged up really quickly. I'll probably have to go ahead and replace that again uh, within the next day or so, but that's no big deal. I can do that without doing any additional maintenance on the tank. I don't have to do a water change or anything. I just pop the filter out and put a new one in. So we'll do that in a day or two. All right, everybody, there you go. There is a look at my 40 gallon native tank. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you real soon in the next one.